It's time for Fight News Now Extra. My name is John Pollock, and thank you for joining us. John Ramdean will be along in a few minutes as we discuss today's news in mixed martial arts. Topics today include the UFC releasing a middleweight, a new heavyweight bout has been booked, and we'll hear from former Bellator matchmaker Sam Kaplan. The UFC has announced that heavyweights Alistair Overeem and Stefan Struve are set to fight on December the 13th on the UFC's next card on Fox, which will take place in Phoenix, Arizona. Overeem is coming out of a loss from two weeks back at the hands of Ben Rothwell, while Struve has not competed since March of 2013 after dealing with heart issues, including a leak of his aortic valve. Struve was set to return in July at UFC 175, but the fight was cancelled the night of the bout when he suffered a panic attack as he got set to fight Matt Mitrione. The Nevada Athletic Commission has requested that both light heavyweight champion John Jones and challenger Daniel Cormier attend a NAC hearing on September the 23rd to deal with a possible punishment for their brawl at the MGM Grand Garden Hotel last month while promoting their fight. UFC Tonight was the first to report this, with Jones and Cormier facing a fine of up to $250,000 or their purses for the fight, which was scheduled for September the 27th and later moved to January the 3rd after Jones suffered a knee injury in training. Francis Carmont announced online this week that he has been let go by the UFC after three consecutive losses, all taking place this year, with the most recent to Talis Leites last month in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Carmont, who trains with TriStar out of Montreal, had won 11 straight fights before his skid in 2014 and had been with the UFC since 2011. And former Bellator matchmaker Sam Kaplan was my guest on the MMA Report this week. Kaplan is now promoting for the Matrix Fights promotion, which is running a card December the 5th in Philadelphia, and chatted about all of the changes to Bellator that have been made with Scott Coker coming into the promotion and more changes to come in 2015. It was a, a great move. To me, it was a very necessary move. I understood why we did the weekly events at first, and I understood why we did the tournament format and really loved the tournament format during the initial growth stages of the company when you were looking for some kind of hook to differentiate yourself from all the other fight promotions out there. But as we used that tournament format, it actually, uh, it actually worked and, and did what we thought it would do and create some new stars and allowed us to elevate a lot of fighters to, to the table. Once those fighters had reached that, that, that top 10 level, you know, there was a lot of matchups that, that we wanted to make that we just couldn't make because the tournament format was just too confining. But, you know, the weekly format, you know, it, it, it has its drawbacks. You want to do events. You know, the architect behind that was Bjorn Repney. You know, Bellator was, was Bjorn's company. And I think that he felt by doing, you know, shows like that, it might be easier to sell to a TV partner. Uh, it might be easier to sell to sponsors when it's, you know, a, a weekly show. You know, it's a lot like the pro wrestling mentality where pro wrestling's on every week, every Monday, eight, you know, 9 to 11. And, you know, the same wrestlers are appearing every every week and guys don't go away. They're always in the public conscious. And I think that's what Jordan thought by doing weekly shows with a tournament format. You'd be able to create stars because these guys would be, uh, they, would, they would just constantly be in the public forefront. They'd be the... Uh, big focus on them as opposed to guys fighting and then disappearing for three to four months. It would just be easier to elevate them and get them more name recognition. And that was Sam Kaplan. That full interview is up at FightNetwork.com in the podcast section. And certainly with all of these changes being made, John, Bellator really trying to establish their own identity. It's early, obviously, with Scott Coker coming in. But what are kind of your senses thus far of how they're achieving that goal right now of trying to be that alternative and do something different? Yeah, I mean, you know, when Sam was talking about the tournament format, the problem that I think fans had with the Bellator organization is that they just weren't willing to evolve. They didn't have to stick to the tournament format. And so many of them. And that's it, so many of them. And I think that fans, you know, yes, they want to see the tournament because they might not know who some of these guys are. But once you start getting used to the Michael Chandlers and the Douglas Limas, then you can start pairing these guys up. And I think you can get away from the tournament format. Coker says he's not going to completely get away from the tournament format. Strike Force, when he was promoting there, they still had tournaments. So hopefully in the future, we'll get to see it, but with big names. So I like the direction of the promotion because you look at coming up on Friday, you have the main event, Melvin Manhoff taking on uh, Doug the Rhino Marshall. Two exciting fighters, very, very similar to Roy Nelson and Mark Hunt. These are two stand-up guys. Nobody expects to see a ground game, ground battle between these guys. Two tie boxers taking the center of the cage and battling it out. And that's what it comes down to. And I think Coker understands that, sure, the UFC, it's, it's the, the biggest mixed martial arts promotion in the world where guys, you know, go and they, they compete. But I think stylistically, 
Scott Coker brings in a different element where it's more about entertainment opposed to just the sport of mixed martial arts. Let's chat a bit about the news items uh, today. The Nevada State Athletic Commission, they are requesting both John Jones and Daniel Cormier appear later this month facing a fine of up to 250 grand each or their purses for this fight. Uh, laughable that you could even imagine they're going to uh, be no. giving up their purses for this fight in a this is where the conflict comes, because Nevada is essentially disciplining themselves here. It, it, Jones and Cormier, they get fined any significant amount. Well, I'm we not fight. fighting in Nevada. We'll, we'll, we'll take That's it to it. another state yeah. then. And I'm certain the UFC doesn't want to ruffle the feathers of the commission. But if I'm John Jones and they, they want to take away half my purse, let's be honest. This thing added so much more interest mm -hmm. of which Nevada benefits from that. It, Directly. Yeah, of course. There's more people going to come to the show. There's more people going to go to the, the stay in hotels and go in restaurants and so on and so forth. So uh, it's very bizarre, but I, I agree with you. I think if, if it comes down to both Jones and Cormier getting a huge fine, the fight's not happening. What's going to happen? I mean, I'm certain there's going to be something, sure, but it's going to be a slap, a slap on, on the, the wrist. wrist. That's exactly what it's going to be. And that's probably what we will see. That fight is happening January the 3rd. Francis Carmon has been let go by the UFC. Uh, is this a move where, I mean, Francis Carmon can maybe just get take on some lower shows and maybe build himself back up. He's had a very tough year in 2014, three consecutive losses. Uh, was this a release that made sense to you? Yeah, it made sense in the sense that uh, Francis Carmont, you know, he's not an action fighter. He's a guy that knows how to compete at the highest level. But when you lose to top end guys, especially three fights in the road, the UFC says, okay, uh, where's the balance here? We have to figure out, is this guy worth keeping? I guarantee you that if Donald Cerrone or Eddie Alvarez lost three or four fights in the UFC, they would still have Alistair a job. Over him. That's right. I mean, Alistair hasn't lost Overeem. those consecutive yeah. fights, but he's booked for uh, Stefan Struve, December the 13th. Yeah. Any concerns with, with Stefan Struve? I mean, he was cleared to fight before yeah. that Matt Mitrione fight. They insisted that the panic attack had nothing to do with the heart issues. Is there any part of you that, that is concerned about this guy and his health? If doctors, yeah. are, we're not medical professionals, so uh, we course. can't really gauge if the guy's ready to fight or not. If it's, the doctor says he is. It's his job, and it's the job of his team to ensure the safety of the fighter. And Stefan Struve, as a grown man, should say, you know what? If the doctor's telling me I shouldn't compete, I'm not going to compete. But if everybody says it's a go, I'm down to watch Struve and Overeem. That'll be on Fox December the 13th. Also looking at Stipe Miocic, JDS on that same card. So lots of heavyweight action. For John Ramdine, I'm John Pollock. And more Fight News Now Extra is coming your way.